The iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is gonna be a hard one to talk about because for some people, this is the hardest phone to recommend. Like this is just straight up gonna be a pass for many of you. But at the same time, it's got so much going for it that it's also really hard for me not to recommend it. I've been using this phone as my primary device for the past month and to be honest, I'd be lying to you if I said I'm not enjoying it, because I am, thoroughly for that matter. And that's not because Apple has given us some crazy big new feature to get hyped about, because they really haven't. I mean, on paper, the differences between the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13, they're pretty darn minimal. And that's why this is gonna be a hard pass for a lot of you. I mean, if you already have an iPhone 12, I can already tell you that you're probably not gonna wanna upgrade unless you're really into tech and you always want the latest and greatest stuff. But before you run off and say, the iPhone 13 sucks, the iPhone 13's boring, let me tell you why that isn't the case. The biggest changes for the iPhone 13 Pro Max can be broken down into three basic categories. They've made some huge changes to the display, a big improvement to battery life with a size increase and efficiency upgrades that come with the new A15 Bionic CPU. And I can now confidently say that the iPhone 13 Pro Max has the best cameras for video in a phone that I've ever seen, period. Let's start with the first one. What's the first thing you think of when I ask you what iPhone displays have been missing for the past four years? The answer is a high refresh rate display. Now, some of you might've been thinking, you know, a more bezel-less screen or a hole punch instead of that notch, but we'll get to that in a sec. The iPhone 13 Pro models now have 120 Hertz high refresh rate displays, finally. To someone like me that uses high refresh rate monitors for gaming and is very sensitive to changes in frame rate, getting to use iOS with a 120 Hertz display feels so good. I've been waiting for this change for such a long time because to me, it makes an enormous difference to the speed and fluidity of the animations on the iPhone. But I worded that statement very carefully. I said it makes an enormous difference to me. I know a lot of people that actually just can't tell the difference between a 60 hertz display and a 120 hertz display. Now that concept blows my mind a little bit because it's such an obvious difference to me, but it's true that you might not be able to immediately see a big difference and that's okay. I will guarantee you two things though. Number one, whether subconsciously or otherwise, you will feel like your phone is faster to use. And number two, after using a 120 hertz display for a little while, your old 60 hertz phone will feel slow and stuttery. Now, about that notch, Apple has reduced the size of it slightly by about 20% or so, but is this an upgrade? No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, we don't get any more usability out of the corners because Apple hasn't updated the UI in any way to give us a battery percentage indicator or more info about notifications or anything like that. They just enlarged the size of the icons that were already there. I suppose you do get a little extra room when watching videos in full screen, but it's really not a big enough of an upgrade that Apple deserves any sort of praise for. The screen does get noticeably brighter this year though. I was out shooting some video of our coastline and some enormous waves that were coming in, and and it took me a couple of minutes to realize it, but even outdoors in direct sunlight, I had zero problem seeing the display. It was almost as bright and clear outside as it was inside. Now, you would think that a brighter, high refresh rate display would decimate overall battery life, especially given Apple's track record of placing relatively tiny batteries inside their phones. But that's actually not the case at all. On stage, Apple announced that you will get two and a half hours more usage on the 13 Pro Max than the 12 Pro Max. And while that metric is extremely vague, typical of Apple, I think if anything, they were actually underselling. At the risk of sounding like a fanboy or someone that's hyping this phone up too much, I'm gonna say it anyway, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has the best battery life out of any phone I have ever used. It's approaching tablet tier battery life. In the past 30 days of using this phone, I have not been able to come close to killing the battery in a single day. There have been times where I just didn't charge the battery for two days and I still had like 10 to 20% battery left. And I wasn't trying to save battery life either. I was just using it normally. The reason the battery is so good is for two reasons. First of all, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a slight bit thicker and heavier than last year's Pro Max. And I don't want to understate this. This is a big beefy boy. I'm around 6'2 or 6'3 and I have massive hands, like easily palm a basketball hands. And at first, 
This was kind of an uncomfortable phone to hold, especially with a case on it. Now I got used to it, but at 240 grams, it's not a light phone at all. The reason it's thicker and heavier is because Apple put a bigger 4352 milliamp hour battery in this phone. Now that's actually at the lower end of the spectrum for a 6.5 inch phone like this. The S21 Ultra, for example, has a 5000 milliamp hour battery. And that's where the new A15 Bionic CPU comes in. Anontech has written a fantastic article on power and efficiency of the A15, which I'll include in the link below. But the conclusion is that it's about 62% faster than the previous A14 and is more efficient at the same time due to Apple's four new high efficiency cores. I don't care much for performance upgrades. Apple already has some of the best performing hardware on the market, but I'm always after better battery life. And the 13 Pro Max has battery for days, literally. Durability wise, I've had no issues, but given the price of this phone, I've decided to keep it in one of Caseology's cases to keep it safe. Apple talks big about their ceramic shield technology, but glass is glass and you all know what that means. The third largest change this year is with the cameras. At first glance, these cameras don't look to be a whole lot different, but stick it next to any other iPhone and holy mother of God, this thing is huge. The camera bump itself is roughly half the size of the iPhone 13 mini, like the phone. The camera bump is half the size of the iPhone 13 mini phone. All three cameras on this phone are new this year. From what I've seen so far, the photos coming from these cameras are unsurprisingly, Fantastic. HDR does a great job with balancing the exposure across the frame in outdoor shots. Portrait still has a little ways to go when it comes to separating complex objects from the background, but it seems to have people mostly figured out. Skin tones are darn near perfect too, and I honestly can't say there's been a time where I've been really disappointed by the picture I took. It's just a solid, reliable shooter. The 12 megapixel f2.2 front facing camera is decent as well, but I don't think it's an upgrade over last year's version. Personally, if Apple is gonna stick with the notch for the foreseeable future, I'd like to see them cram an ultra wide camera in here in addition to the normal wide angle camera like Google did with the Pixel 3. It's worth mentioning that I use the default mode in photographic styles to capture all of these, but if you want more contrast or saturation baked into all of your photos, you can just switch to the rich contrast or vibrant modes, which end up making your photos look more like a Pixel or a Samsung phone if you're into that. The new macro mode is super fun to play with. The ultra wide camera on the rear now has autofocus and can focus on something at up to like two centimeters away. You can get so close that you can see the little veins in the wings of this tiny fly. And even though they look huge in this picture, that's a very, very small flower. Smaller than a penny. Gimmick, maybe, but it's also a lot of fun. Now, let's talk about my favorite things about the iPhone 13 Pros this year, the video. Apple has been doing a great job with the video mode in iPhones for a long time, but the 13 series definitely takes it to a whole new level. I would have absolutely no issue shooting video with this phone for my channel. In fact, I did my entire iPhone 13 mini review with the exception of the A-roll, on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Part of the reason it's so good this year is because Apple is bringing ProRes video to this phone. It's not officially here yet, but Filmic Pro has it unlocked already, so that's how I got these shots in ProRes. It does take a crazy toll on your iPhone storage, like just one minute of 4K ProRes 422 took up over five gigabytes of storage space, but it's so worth it in my opinion. These new sensors are great for video, and the standard wide angle camera sensor is so big that if you flipped it around and used a selfie stick, you can actually get some natural background blur behind you. Pair that with an Apple Watch for a tiny external monitor and you've got yourself an excellent portable vlogging rig. You could also use the cinematic mode which I've covered ad nauseum in another video, but in my opinion, you're much better off sticking with 4K and just using the back cameras, unless it's for something like Instagram or TikTok where the resolution doesn't matter. So in terms of the number of changes that Apple made this year, there really aren't that many, which is why I said at the beginning of this video that it's a kind of a hard phone to recommend if you have an iPhone 12 12 series already. Some of the changes are significant though, like the 120 hertz display, ludicrous battery life, and the video quality. So what it comes down to is this. If you're coming from an older phone, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is an easy recommendation. If not, you might want to hold off until next year. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.